Hey everybody, I'm back with another video. This time I'm gonna unbox um, Apple's uh, iPad 10.5, which is the new line of um, iPad Pro. Although I'm getting this a bit late because this has been out for like a month and a half already. So this isn't like the latest video. The Apple Pencil and the Smart Keyboard. So um, this device interests me because because um, Apple has made some changes to the new iOS, iOS 11. It's not out yet, but there's a preview, a developer preview available that will um, apparently make the iPad more like a computer because one of the complaints I've had in the past is that Apple tries to make the iPad Pro into a computer, but in reality, you can't really use it as a full-on computer because you can't access files or open more than two apps at once. So now with this new iPad, and on the new software, the new iOS, you are apparently able to open two full screen apps. I mean, two apps side by side completely with a third app in slide over. And then also, also like a pop up video. So that's like almost four apps at once. And you can actually access files now and you can do things like drag and drop, dra uh, drag and drop. So that will make it a lot more usable as a computer. But um, the software doesn't, doesn't come shipped out of this box um, software has to be downloaded basically it this out of the box it still runs ios 10 i believe why is it so hard to open okay so i know this is a departure from my usual videos because i usually unbox uh chinese products but this is um apple although granted it's still made in china completely made in china so so this is a gold ipad Pretty standard Apple setup. You have the um, plugs, out, the outlets basically, a lightning cable, anything down below. So this is the biggest configuration, the 512 gig storage, which sells for close to a thousand US. It's um, the retail price in Hong Kong is seven thousand seven hundred and seventy. So. That's just about a thousand US. Why is everything so hard to take out? Okay, so... So let's check out some specs for this iPad. Because, uh... 10.5 inch display. With a resolution of 1668 by two, 2224, which is technically a, uh, which is a retina display. How do you even turn this on? It's been a while since I've used an Apple product, which is ironic because I actually have an iPad Pro, the first generation, but I don't, I don't touch it. It just sits in my room collecting dust. So this is the second generation iPad Pro. So 10.5 inch display. The camera has been upgraded significantly over the last generation iPad Pro. This is a a 12 megapixel camera on the back versus um, I think it's like 5 megapixel on, on the first generation iPad. 4 gigs of RAM with Apple A10X chip. So this display. Let me set this up first. So the feel of this iPad is very similar to to tradition um to like the traditional 9.7 inch iPads. This feels a lot smaller than an iPad Pro, which let me get it out right now. Okay, so this is my first generation iPad Pro. Um yeah so as you can see huge size difference actually. I'm so surprised. Huge size difference. This is a 10.5 inch screen this is a 12.9 12 .9, I believe. So this is a lot more manageable if if you if you want portability, although this is pretty light too. This is the first generation iPad Pro, so this one has a newer chip, better camera. Anyway, let me unbox everything first, and then I will set up the device and come back, come back and check out the software. Although it's still iOS 10 here, so I guess there won't be anything new. Maybe I'll maybe I'll make the video after I download iOS 11 actually. So this is the Apple keyboard. I, I remember the first generation one. I never I never owned it, but I read pretty bad reviews because 
the typing experience was good, but it like you can't change the um like the the angle or how much far how far back it goes. So I'm not sure if this will be better. We'll see. Smart keyboard. So it connects automatically to the the three magnetic pins without needing to set up Bluetooth. Okay, I am liking how small and thin this is. If if the typing experience is good and the v and, and the viewing angle it's not completely locked into one place, I can I can totally use this as my regular as my regular travel work device. If iOS eleven lives up to the to the hype. So this is my first time connecting this keyboard so I'm not sure how does it work I think you connect it like this okay it snaps on pretty automatically and then from here I think you do this yeah okay I'm not sure is there another angle it doesn't appear to be yeah I think it's pretty much locked like this doesn't appear to be another angle so this is fine if you're typing on the desk but anyway um so this is the apple pencil i actually own an apple pencil myself so there's really no need to unbox this for me but just to show i used the apple pencil for my ipad pro two years ago to draw like a comic book for my girlfriend i I'm not a huge fan of Apple products in general. Like I don't like the iPhone, but the Apple Pencil is really good. It's it's like the pressure, the sensitivity, and you know you can also it detects the angles of, of your pen. It feel you know so it's the stylus is definitely good if a little bit overpriced. This is like a hundred bucks, hundred US. So pretty bare bones Apple Pencil. So you have the charger, this weird charger that you have to that you have to unplug. Plug into here and then plug into the cable, or you can plug it straight into an iPad, the dock. So it's, the setup is a little bit weird. Okay, this is the app. This is an Apple Pencil case. This is new. This wasn't around like a year ago when I got my iPad Pro. Man, why is Apple Pro so damn hard to open? So how does this work? So I'm assuming you put the pencil into here like this. Yeah, and then is there a way to connect this magnetically to the tablet? Doesn't seem like it. Okay. So I don't know what's the point of this. It it protects the tip, I guess, but you can't stick it to to the actual iPad. This is my iPad Pro case, a third-party case that I purchased. It's much better in my opinion. I mean, there's no keyboard, but first of all, you can adjust the viewing angle. And also, there's a loop here. There's a loop here for the Apple Pencil. Okay, so this is the setup. So Apple believes that after you download iOS 11, you'll be able to use this as a work computer. So I will set everything up and I'll be back with, a bit, uh, with more in-depth hands-on. Okay, so I've been testing the iPad Pro for a couple of hours now and I'm liking it a lot. So as mentioned earlier, iOS 11, the biggest improvement is that it makes the iPad more like a proper computer. You get a file drive now so you can pick your files and you can also see so you can bring up a dock from the bottom and jump between apps. So now that's a lot more like a proper laptop because you don't have to press the home button to go back to the home screen. So this iPad Pro has Apple's A10X chip, the newest chip with four gigs of RAM. So everything loads really fast. So right now, as you can see, I have two apps open right now, email and Safari. You can also open a third app um, in slide over. That kind of floats in and out if you want. Let me set it up right now. So this is a beta software, so I found that the slide over is still a little bit buggy, but it mostly works. 
So now all you have to do is swipe from the right and I have Twitter open now along with YouTube and Safari. So that's technically three apps open at once. Now let's take a look at the smart keyboard case, um, which is the official first party Apple case. It's really thin, surprisingly thin and light. And the case um, attaches really easily. You see the three magnetic uh, port. So it just, connect, it just snaps on automatically and then it goes into place. Now, unfortunately, this is a set angle. You can't adjust this angle at all. This is all you get. Now, the keys have really shallow travel, but I found the typing experience quite good. So I actually went on um, typingtest.com and tried the ASOP test. And I'm, I finished with 97 words per minute, which is about six words below my average because I'm a fast typer. I usually get about 103 words per minute. So basically for the past two hours, I've been using the iPad Pro as a work machine, uh, writing an article for my Forbes page and just surfing the web and doing research and all that. And although having to touch the screen felt a bit weird at first, I eventually got used to it. And now that iOS 11's improved, I think this can be a laptop replacement for me. And, you know, just looking at the hardware, the iPad Pro, obviously it's a very impressively built device like all of Apple's um, devices. So at the bottom, um, lightning port, two speakers at the bottom, two speakers up top, and they, and they sound amazing, the four speakers together. The camera hump is quite bad though, but that's because the iPad Pro's um, camera has been much improved. So right there is that three magnetic uh, port to plug in the keyboard. Let's check out that speaker. And of course the Apple display, um, it might not be the most densest display out there, but it still looks really sharp. So as mentioned earlier, this new iPad gets a huge upgrade in camera. Now the back camera is a 12 megapixel shooter with a f1.8 aperture, while the selfie camera is now a 7 megapixel f2.2 lens. That's a huge jump over the last iPad Pro, which had a 1.5 megapixel selfie lens. So as you can see, the photos, they, they look very vibrant with really good details. I wanted to upload the photos to this video directly, but stupid Apple has its own format for photos that makes it hard to transfer over. So I just have to show it to you on iPad. There is opt also optical image stabilization um, on the iPad. So check out the video, it's really smooth. So I'm walking at a pretty fast pace. And as you can see, the video is not bouncy. Details are really good, and the, and the bright sun doesn't get overexposed. Like overall, this is a really high quality video. So you know, even though this is just a hands-on, I have quite the impression of the iPad Pro already because we know that it's the best tablet on the market. So the question is, how badly do you need your tablet to also be a laptop replacement? If you actually only want to just have one device that can get work done, the iPad Pro is a good option, but it is pretty pricey. Thanks for watching.